Welcome back to Let's Play Halo 2 Anniversary. I'm Burning Dog Face, and we're setting out into Gravemind, the location of one of the last two terminals. What a horrible fucking thing that is. You know, for me, that's one of the most memorable lines in the entire game, but I still have absolutely no idea what the hell he means by a monument to all your sins. Hey guys, I discovered that if you put the- if you uh, set the graphics to default to classic, it actually shows you the original 2004 in-engine cutscenes. So I thought, just for funsies, I would share with you the experience of meeting the Gravemind in 2004. What is that? I am a monument to all your sins. Looks more like a Venus flytrap than a meat monster. Relax. I'd rather not piss this thing off. Demon. Although according to the concept art, it was meant to have a bunch of skulls for this teeth. One is machine and nerve. And has its mind concluded. This one is but flesh and faith, and is the more deluded. Kill me or release me, Parasite. But do not waste my time with talk. There is much talk, and I have listened through rock and metal and time. Now I shall talk, and you shall listen. Greetings! I am 2401 Penitent Tangent. I am the monitor of Installation 05. And I am the Prophet of Regret, Counselor Most High, Hierarch of the Covenant. A Reclaimer? Here? At last! We have much to do. This facility must be activated if we are to control this outbreak. Stay where you are! Nothing can be done until my sermon is complete! Not true. This installation has a successful utilization record of 1.2 trillion simulated in one actual. It is ready to fire on demand. Of all the objects our lords left behind... Regret freaks me out, man. None so worthless as these oracles! He was dead when they you found know him. nothing of the great journey! And you know nothing about containment! You have demonstrated complete disregard for even the most basic protocols! This one's containment... <sighs> and this one's great journey are the same. <laughs> Your prophets have promised you freedom from a doomed existence. But you will find no salvation on this ring. Those who built this place knew what they wrought. Do not mistake their intent, or all will perish as they did before. This thing is right. Halo is a weapon. Your prophets are making a big mistake. Your ignorance already destroyed one of the Sacred Rings, Demon. It shall not harm another. If you will not hear the truth, then I will show it to you. There is still time to stop the key from turning. But first it must be found. You will search one likely spot. 
and you will search another. Fate had us meet as foes, but this ring will make us brothers. Jesus Christ. Brutes! The faster you can kill those brutes, the better. I mean, that's generally true of anyone who's trying to murder you. I'm just saying. Can I get that? No, of course I can't. That would be silly. No, I'm not invisible in this level. Ah, uh, fuck. Really? They don't have shield generators, but take them out before... It's berserking! I remember hearing that Bungie were ultimately unsatisfied with, uh... the dual-wielding stuff, for a few reasons. I mean, I was already familiar with the one about, uh... I think I mentioned it to you guys. Yeah, they had a problem with the, uh... Oh, right, kill all the guys, and then they'll let you leave the room. Yeah, sorry, where it interrupts your ability to, uh, throw grenades or punch. The demon has infiltrated the council chamber! Protect the hierarchs! Seal the exits! Oh, I don't think so. No? Uh, do I have... Oh, fuck! The other reason, which I had not actually heard about, was, uh... the fact that it made issues in balancing. Uh, specifically, there's, there was a certain perception that... if a gun worked in... dual wield- if a gun was meant for dual wielding mode, then it would feel weak and underpowered on its own. And if it didn't, then it ended up feeling OP when you dual wielded it, like, uh, the Needler. Ah, uh, fuck. Mind you, I feel like the Needler is a very special case because of the whole seven hits means the guy explodes thing. Needles! Oh dear. You fuck off! Put me down on one of the pedestals near the door. Yes, yes, yes. That prophet, Truth, he has the index. You've got to take it from him. Let me get these doors. Go. It'll be easier to track Truth if I stay in the network. Oh, right. Shit, that's the last time she was in his head in this game. Oh, here's a fun fact. She is literally going in his head. Uh... Oh, Lord Hood! If you go back and look at the opening cutscene where Lord Hood is... You can see that he's got a port on the back of his head. This is, uh, the neural interface. Which basically everyone serving in the UNSC has, because it's the future. I don't know what he uses his for, but the Spartans have a very special advanced model that, uh... Okay, that's not what I wanted to do! Where'd that carbine go? There it is. When you plug the chip into the back of the helmet, 
It doesn't just connect to the computer system in the helmet. It connects to the computer system in uh, the Master Chief's brain. And, uh, yeah, she's li Cortana is literally using some of the less, you know, useful parts of uh, uh, the Chief's brain to uh, run her calculations. Makes her faster. Makes him faster. Sorry. Oh, God damn it! Didn't mean to shoot Cortana there, but I uh, didn't mean to die either. Got one of them with that random ass blast. Maybe not. Oh no no no! Look, there's a dead one. Oh right, I forgot about the turret. No, don't back up, or the turret can get me. God damn it! Oh. Hate. Wonder why the knee pads are so scuffed up in the old graphics. Apparently, whoever was testing the suit. Uh, did too many power slides. Run away! Fuck me! This level! I accidentally said it a heroic or something? Jesus Christ. Alright, I'll see you guys when I get outside. have failed to protect the province, and in so doing, put all our lives at risk. But no warrior can get his own. Thou and they will keep us safe whilst we buy the power. I've got a fix on oh, truth just it. outside this tower, Chief. Okay, uh, just wanted to say, you know, still making my way through the level. I haven't gotten to the bit they pictured in the image. Kind of didn't think the uh, outdoor parts came until the level after this, so I'm wondering if I was looking at the wrong one, but... I don't know, it looks all right to me. Grave Mine Terminal, that's what it says. But I haven't seen any outdoor areas at all those weird rooty plants, so, uh... Not sure where to find it. Gonna keep going! This time, I'm just interjecting to tell you that at one point I died and the David Cross Marine said this. Why? Why couldn't it have been me? Believe the number of kill systems the Covenant are throwing down around me. Not to worry, it's pretty sloppy stuff. I guess they never expected a hostile intelligence to penetrate their network from the inside. Okay, head left, look for roots. Oh god! Oh, I remember you. Can he do it twice? He can! So I don't think this is the right area. Let's see. Well, no, it's the right area. It's outdoors and it's got the rooty plants. It's just, I need to find the right spot, obviously. Oh, good, hunters. It said that if you kill uh, a hunter, before the other one, you know, before the pair bonded, uh, what do they call them? Bond brothers. That's what they call each other. Uh. Oh, fuck! Oh, jeez. Could you at least pretend to aim? Oh, my God. Alright, just gonna finish this thought. Um. There's a bit in one of the books. Just very briefly, from the perspective of a hunter, as he watches the Spartans kill his uh, brother, and he freaks out and goes over to smash them into goo. And as they mortally wound him and he slips away into death, his mind is filled only with joy at the thought of being reunited with his Bond brother. It's a very interesting society. Even though I've never heard one of them speak so much as a word, I'd be interested in learning more about the Lekagolo. Okay, there is a path to the right of the place I was looking for. I just couldn't find it because I was only focusing on the left side. Oh, 
Ooh. No, you don't. Not this close. Let's do this before anyone else shows up. Whereas most species were grafted into the Covenant by faith or mutual beneficence, the Ungoi were not such. Their kind was brought into the fold by force, and it was by force uh, that they were held captive. Dude. Their world had no prayer against our might and majesty, and their peoples were quickly laid low, many of them brought into subjugation. Yet while some species would perish under such pressure, others rise to the occasion, taking arms if need be, fighting back. Such it was for the Ungoy when their feud with the Kigyar led to rebellion. An effort by the Kigyar to sterilize the Ungoy population was met with stiff resistance. And for a time, the holy city was thrown into chaos. Once fully provoked, the Ungoy were merciless in their violence, lashing out at all species. Their Dear large God. numbers and their tenacious volatility made them a suitable challenge, even for the elites. And yet again, we turned to an arbiter. Mike. Oh. And with a ferocity unparalleled since the beginning of the Covenant, the Ungoy world would be reduced to glass. No. Those within the holy city would be forced to watch, unable to stop what could have been the very end of their kind. The Ungoy rebellion was brought to an end by the Arbiter's hand. Their world was not completely lost, and those who survived within high charity found some measure of mercy. They had proven their worth in combat, and would now serve alongside the Sangheili in battle. Holy shit! I had no idea grunts could be that dangerous! Uh, go for it, so it's my lozenge wrapper. My god! Sorry about that. Just... Man alive, I didn't know they ever tried to glass any of their own people. Mind you, I also assumed all of the species originally joined because of naive promises of, uh, godhood. I had heard of the Grunt Rebellion, you know, of course they mentioned it in passing in the cutscene or they created the Arbiter, but I'd never seen any of that before. I had heard one thing, that before the Grunt Rebellion, they were literally used as meat shields. They were, uh, ordered to rush the enemy without weaponry. Like, the entire reason the Covenant wanted the Grunts in the first place is because, well, they're not the top of their food chain on their homeworld. So they reproduce like rabbits so quickly that they can replenish their numbers even if they suffer devastating losses in a, uh, in a war. You know, this is the primary reason why it's the grunts who are used as, uh, cannon fodder and not the, uh, the jackals. You know, they're still considered lower than, uh, the other Covenant races, but the jackals don't reproduce nearly as quickly, so they aren't expendable. God in heaven. You could probably make some pretty good books just on the early history of the Covenant. Just focus entirely on that shit. Like, here is a novel about how they got the Jackals to agree to stop being assholes for long enough to join. They must, they must have approached that from a place of profit. Like, with an F, I mean. 
<laughs> you know, it had to be that they presented them with numbers, and it will be significantly more profitable for your species if you join our covenant than if you remain as asshole space pirates. You know, there's, uh, it's interesting. You know, the Covenant faith has always had differing levels of strength. I don't know how the Grunts feel about it. I don't know how the, how the Jackals feel about it, although I can only assume they're dismissive of it because they hate everything. And, uh... I know for a fact that the Hunters are never particularly attached to the Covenant religion, which is one of the reasons why they sided with the Arbiter in the Civil War. Which, incidentally, is officially termed the Great Schism. I don't know who calls it that, because, uh... I feel like the Covenant historians are too busy hiding under their desks or killing each other to, uh... You know, make notes of this war. Still, there's one terminal left. And then there might be some other stuff to look at. I have to admit... I only looked into the how of the toys after I brought it up on the other video, and more than one of the entries included the term grenade jump. Oh no. I didn't even know you could do that. I thought very specifically that explosions could not propel you in this game the way they propelled you in old school shooters. I guess I wasn't close enough to even take damage there, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that uh, that guide was clearly written in such a way that it assumed you already knew what it was. And to do was just grenade jump up to this higher level, and then ah. Seriously, I they start. It started because they tried to sterilize them. I mean, one, you know, being not sterile is the entire reason the Covenant were on board with them. But two. Holy fuck! Like, you know, it's like I said, I knew that in terms of, like, culture and personality, the jackals were just... angry pieces of shit, but... I didn't think they'd go as far as fucking eugenics. Just because- and it's not even like they're their enemies, they just don't like the grunts. You know, they pick on the grunts because they're the only species considered lower than them. Yeah, no wonder they side out of the fucking elites. Oh, God. I'm Burning Dogface, and I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Halo 2 Anniversary when you go and look for the last one in The Great Journey, the final level of the game. Level. Level. Later!